Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Jesus paid it all, all to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Yes, he swept it away, didn't he? Jesus paid it all, all to him we owe. Miss Connie and Cindy and Kathy and Luann and Sharon. Jesus paid it all, Miss Yolinda. All to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. A stain. We were stained. We were dirty. He, he, he washed. He, he washed it white as snow. And a lot of you are looking at snow right now. You can relate to that. I mean, when you look at the snow, just picture yourself that you are washed. Clean, clean. Oh my goodness. That wonderful word clean has come up now, hasn't it? Several days, several days in all the readings. Well, y'all, this is February 24. February 24, and you are right, Miss Cindy. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day here. It's a beautiful day in our home because my Sammy is 88 years old today. 88. And he still takes the steps two at a time. And he can walk way ahead of me. Of course, his legs are longer. And he's into walking. And I kind of putz along. <laughs> Good morning, Miss... Linda, I pray you had it just a wonderful, restful night. Today, on February 24th, get ready, y'all, because we're going to go over the details of private cleansing. Okay, cleanliness. Here's clean again, right? The word clean, I guess I sang the right song. I asked the Lord, and that's what he told me. And then it always amazes me. He shows me how it really was him. It's so exciting. Cleanliness for men and women, okay? I wish this had been taught in health class when I was in high school. We'd have gotten a hold of it a whole lot stronger because it's anointed. So we are reading from Yaikra, Yaikra, Leviticus chapter 15 and part of 16. Leviticus 15 and part of 16 so listen up y'all listen up and listen up uh, to be able to teach children and grandchildren and the Lord spoke to Moshe and Aaron saying speak to the children of Israel Wow he starts off every message with that really doesn't he Mel hallelujah speak to the children of Israel I will I will pass your precious Birthday greetings along. You are so special to even bother to write it. Thank you so much. Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when any man has a discharge from his body, his discharge is unclean. And this shall be his uncleanness in regard to his discharge, whether his body runs with his discharge, or his body is stopped up by his discharge. Got that? It is his uncleanness. Every bed 
is unclean on which he who has the discharge lies and everything on which he sits shall be unclean and whoever touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean till evening Woo -wee. he who sits on anything which he who has the discharge sat shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening and he who touches the body of him who has the discharge shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening and oh you know i read all this and and water is just spoken of and i think of my precious people out in the desert of kenya and a lot of them they have to walk a long way and carry a little bit of water or a pot on their head. These ladies are amazing. I, I marvel how they can get that up from the ground up on their head. They know how to do it. So sometimes it's really hard for them to follow a scripture like we're reading. If he who has the discharge spits on him who is clean, then he shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Any saddle on which he who has the discharge rides shall be unclean. Whoever touches anything that was under him shall be unclean until evening. This is really taking a hold of any chance of spreading, spreading disease and germs. He who carries any of the things shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And whomever the one who has the discharge touches and has not rinsed his hands in water, he shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And you know, man, the whole world has been told over and over and over, signs on the doors and everything, wash wash your hands wash your hands and someday we're going to know you know as much as this all a lot of this has just been a real dirge to try to carry out i wonder how many other sicknesses and diseases have been totally prevented or at least slowed down because we have tended to washing our hands in particular other areas too but our hands the vessel of earth that he who has the discharge touches shall be broken, broken. And every vessel of wood shall be rinsed in water. And when he who has a discharge is cleansed of his discharge, then he shall count for himself seven days for his cleansing. Wash his clothes, a lot of wash on the clothes, and bathe his body in running water, running, taking the dirt, the disease away from you, away from everybody, running water, then he shall be clean. And how blessed are we that we have faucets in our home. We don't have to go out and carry water. Listen up, you spoiled, rotten Americans, including Jane Howarth. Listen, every time I turn that shower on, I'm praising God because I also have had to bathe out of a little tiny pan when I go to Kenya. So I have learned to appreciate. We all need to appreciate. On the eighth day, he shall take for himself two turtle doves or two young pigeons and come before the Lord to the door of the tabernacle of meeting and give them to the priest. And then the priest shall offer them the one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord because of his discharge. If any man has an omission of semen, then he shall wash all his body in water and be unclean until evening. 
and any garment and any leather on which there is semen, it shall be washed with water and be unclean until evening. And when a woman lies with a man and there is an emission of semen, they shall bathe in water and be unclean until evening. If a woman has a discharge <clears throat> and the discharge from her body is blood, she shall be set apart seven days and whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening. Everything that she lies on during her impurity shall be unclean. Also, everything that she sits on shall be unclean. Whoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And whoever touches anything that she sat on shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. If anything is on her bed or on anything on which she sits, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until evening. And if any man lies with her at all, so that her impurity is on him, he shall be unclean seven days. Seven days. And every bed on which he lies shall be unclean. And here we are, this great society in America and other countries who might be watching. And, and we're not careful about this, like it says here. Seven days? Nobody's doing that. We better listen up about the cleanliness. Listen up. If a woman has a discharge of blood for many days other than at the time of her customary impurity, or if it runs beyond her usual time of impurity, all the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her customary impurity. She shall be unclean. Every bed on which she lies all the days of her discharge shall be to her as the bed of her impurity. And whatever she sits on shall be unclean as the uncleanness of her impurity. Whoever touches those things shall be unclean. He shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Uh, I think about that uh, because because of the air I don't know Miss Connie you're a nurse you got any extra things to say about waiting till evening but if she is cleansed of her discharge then she shall count for herself seven days and after that she shall be clean and on the eighth day she shall take for herself two turtle doves or two young pigeons and bring them to the priest to the door of the tabernacle of meeting. Good morning, Miss Maria. And then the priest shall offer the one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. And the priest shall make atonement for her before the Lord for the discharge of her uncleanness. And thus you shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness, lest they die. And it happens, doesn't it? Lest they die in their uncleanness when they defile my tabernacle that is among them. This is the law for one who has a discharge and for him who emits semen and is unclean thereby. And for her who is indisposed because of her customary impurity, and for one who has a discharge, either man or woman, and for him who lies with her who is unclean. And we move right along <clears throat> to chapter 16 of Vairikra.
Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 16. Now the Lord spoke to Moshe after the death of the two sons of Aaron. Remember that terrible time? When they offered profane fire before the Lord and died. <clears throat> and the Lord said to Mos Moshe, Moses, tell Aaron, your brother, not to come at just any time into the holy place inside the veil before the mercy seat, which is on the ark, lest he die. For I will appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. And thus Aaron shall come into the holy place with the blood of a young bull <clears throat> as a sin offering and of a ram as a burnt offering. He shall put the holy linen tunic and the linen trousers on his body. He shall be girded with a linen sash and with the linen turban he shall be attired. And I've been told uh, one of the reasons is people don't sweat in linen like they do wool. These are holy garments. Therefore, he shall wash his body in water and put them on. And he shall take from the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats as a sin offering and one ram as a burnt offering. Aaron shall offer the bull as a sin offering, which is for himself, for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house. He shall take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. And then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats. Cast lots. Wow. Those words are suggesting Purim, which that's, that's what's happening. That's where the Jews are right now in their biblical year. And then Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. The scapegoat. And Aaron shall bring the goat on which the Lord's lot fell and offer it as a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot fell to be the scapegoat, scapegoat shall be presented alive before the Lord to make atonement upon it and to let it go. Let it go. That's why it's called a scapegoat. It escaped the death. Let it go as the scapegoat into the wilderness. Ah, that has a good feeling in your spirit, doesn't it? That this one is going to be let go, not killed. And Aaron shall bring the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement, excuse me, for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bull as the sin offering, which is for himself. And then he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from the altar before the Lord with his hands full of sweet incense, beaten fine, and bring it inside the veil. Very specific details here, right? And he shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord and the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the testimony, lest he die. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the mercy seat on the east side. And before the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. And then... He shall kill the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people. First, take care of himself. Now he is cleansed and clean before the Lord to make atonement for the people. 
bring its blood inside the veil, do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel and because of their transgressions for all their sins. And so he shall do for the tabernacle of meeting, which remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. There shall be no man in the tabernacle of meeting when he goes in to make atonement in the holy place until he comes out, that he may make atonement for himself, for his household, and for all the assembly of Israel. And he shall go out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it, and shall take some of the blood of the bull and some of the blood of the goat and put it on the horns of the altar all around. And then he shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times. Cleanse it and consecrate it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he has made an end of atoning for the holy place, the tabernacle of meeting, and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat, confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions concerning all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to all an inhabited land. Oh, aren't we grateful for Jesus? The sins laid on the head of the goat and sent out the wood. That was just a credit note. A credit note until the real, real atoning came. Yeshua HaMashiach. Atoning for yours and my sins once and for all. So he could cry, it is finished. This they had to do every year. Another goat, another goat another goat. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to an uninhabited land. Wilderness. Not going to take those sins and dump them on somebody else. And he shall release the goat in the wilderness. And then Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of meeting, shall take off the linen garments which he had put on when he went into the holy place, and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his body with water in a holy place, put on his garments, come out, and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make atonement for himself and for the people. The fat of the sin offering he shall burn on the altar and he who released the goat as the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and afterward he may come into the camp. The bull for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall be carried outside the camp. And they shall burn in the fire their skins, their flesh, and their offal. And then he who burns them shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water. And afterward, he may come into the camp. So that's how the whole nation kept themselves 
clean, clean. Oh, hallelujah. And all the other nations were suffering from uncleanness, dying. I mean, it's well known down through the centuries. The nation of Israel was looked at for what do those people have? Man, they, they, they prosper. They don't seem to be sick and large families and they're doing well. What, 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 what is it they have? Well, this is part of it. All right, we move along, y'all, to the grand and glorious new covenant, the New Testament. And we are picking up here with Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, which starts out with more nitpicking, nitpicking, pick, 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 pick. From the Pharisees and the scribes, they arrive to try to trip Jesus up. Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Yerushalayim. Traveled right down there to cause trouble, didn't they? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, yes, you're right, Miss Connie. None of these diseases. We, uh, we all read that, that, the bunch that got born again in oh, the early 70s, the early 70s, 1970s. We all read that book. And what a great impact. I mean, go on Google or something. See if you can find somebody's old copy. Now, when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, here we go. We just talked about washing the hands. Oh, my goodness. The Old Testament's tied right in here with the new, isn't it? With unwashed hands. They found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way. A special way. Holding the tradition of the elders. Always under running water. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. And then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? This would have been a big thing to them, saying, don't try to tell me how great this man is. Look at this. He didn't even require these guys to wash their hands before they eat. And he answered. Did he answer and say, oh, goodness gracious, I forgot to tell them. Uh-uh. Listen to the answer. He answered and said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written in Isaiah 29, verse 13, if you want to mark that down, 29, 13. He quotes that this is you they were talking about. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me and in vain they worship me teaching as doctrines the commandments of men for laying aside the commandment of god you hold the tradition of men the washing of pitchers and cups and many other such things you do he said to them all too well you reject the commandment of God, that you may keep your tradition. They had their traditions held up higher than the commandments of God. For Moshe said, honor your father and your mother. And he also said, he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. Wow. He's nailing them to the wall with their sins. But you say, you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me, 
is Corbin. And in parentheses I have here, that is a gift to God then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things you do. <clears throat> Jesus is saying, I, I'm just going to bring out this one example, but there's a lot of them I could bring out. And when he had called all the multitude to himself, he said to them, hear me, everyone, and understand there is nothing that enters a man from outside which can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are the things that defile a man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Do you have ears to hear? Do you understand what Jesus just said? And when he had entered a house away from the crowd, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. So he said to them, Are you thus without understanding also? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him because it does not enter his heart? Got that? It does not enter his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods. And he said, what comes out of a man that defiles a man? For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, Pride, foolishness, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile a man. What an awesome teaching. Awesome. That's the whole problem today, isn't it? That list. That list we just read, it's, it's out of control. It is rampant. Ah, <sighs> let's think on all of that, okay? Let's think on all of that. Thank you for your answer, Connie. All right, we move along to Psalm 40. We have already begun yesterday. We will pick up with verse 11, Psalm 40, verse 11. Do this is David. David just David just crying from his heart. Do not withhold your tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let your loving kindness and your truth continually preserve me. For innumerable evils have surrounded me. My iniquities have overtaken me so that I'm not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart, my heart fails me. David says, Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and brought to mutual confusion who seek to destroy my life. Let them be driven backward and brought to dishonor, who wish me evil. Let them be confounded because of their shame, who say to me, aha, aha, mm, mm, aha. Well, can you relate that today? 
We sure can. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. That's you this morning or later today, or maybe you're reading this in the middle of the night. This is you these words are talking about. Let such as love your salvation say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Let the Lord be magnified. Yes, let the Lord be magnified. Continually say that. Let the Lord be magnified. Well, let the Lord be magnified. Yes, let the Lord be magnified. How are we going to do that? With our lips and with our actions. But David says, I'm poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinks upon me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay. Oh, my God. Do not delay. Oh, a lot of us crying that, aren't we? A lot of us are saying, Woo, how long must we wait, Lord? We are crying out, please, let them be driven backward. Let them be confounded. Let them be ashamed. That's what we'd like to see, isn't it? All right, we wrap up today, y'all, with Proverbs chapter 10, verses 13 and 14. Proverbs chapter 10, 13 and 14. Wisdom. Oh, that's what we need to end this reading on, right? Wisdom is found on the lips of him who has understanding. But a rod is for the back of him who is devoid of understanding. i tell you what. My parents, my father had his fraternity paddle, big paddle, about foot and a half, two feet long maybe. He had it hanging up on the wall in our basement. We knew it. And he hardly ever, ever, he, I got one spanking in my whole life. And it was only one, one, one blow. Now it sent me flying. He didn't need to do it again. I was corrected. So, y'all, if your child needs a rod, the rod is for the back of him who is devoid of understanding. Right now, this child is doing foolishness. Don't yak about it. You should do it. I mean, those words... I mean, sometimes my father, if he was going to give anybody a spanking, he didn't, he didn't announce it. He just started heading down the basement steps, and we knew. Woo, we knew. So we hardly ever had to do that. Ever. Maybe once or twice for all three of us. We were corrected. No big, long conversation about it. Oh, you think you're going to do this? Uh, let me show you differently. Wise people store up knowledge, but the mouth of the fool is near destruction. Oh, these are good words, you all. These words will show you a pathway of a wonderful good life. It won't be strife and arguing and I'm going to smack you, and then that smacking doesn't do anything but make the child angrier. And No, you need to do a correction. And if you do, they will walk in that correction. You won't have to do it. Hallelujah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a wise grandma speaking, I'm hoping. <laughs> Father God, we close this wonderful time of reading your word in prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you've allowed us. You've said you can come before me. You can come. And you have asked us to pray for the peace of Yerushalayim. So we will right away. We hold up Israel, your marvelous country. 
and you are bringing your people home from all across the earth. There is a mighty move that people have read about for generations and wondered when it was going to happen. And Lord, you were doing it before our eyes in this generation. We are privileged to see this. So Lord, we do pray for the peace, the peace of Yerushalayim, peace all through the streets, up and down the alleys and the highways and the byways of Yerushalayim, in and out of the stores, even the shut up ones, Lord. That door, those doors are not shut up to you. You can walk in anytime you want right through the door, right through the doors of our homes. You are invited in, Lord. We open the doors of our homes and say, come in. We open the doors of our hearts and our minds and say, please, Lord, come in, come in. Give wisdom. Speaking of wisdom in our proverb, please, Lord, give wisdom to Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu and the Knesset and the IDF. IDF, that wonderful body. Everybody in the country must go in for two years. The whole nation is a trained army. You talk about wisdom. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. I wish we had that going here in America. Thank you, Father, for making us aware of that wisdom. We can do a lot of training for ourselves through you, through your word, and be ready for whatever Satan would try to throw at us. We will be ready. And we will overtake him. He will not overtake us. Ah, yes, you're raising up a great army of believers, Lord. And we are so blessed. Father God, we hold up America. And Lord, I'm finding out more and more the things that are happening behind the scenes. And we are winning. We are winning. There's lots of things I could send you. Let me know if you'd like me to send you some things that you, you might not have known. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So I'm encouraged in my heart, Father God, because you are moving with a grand and glorious plan. You are overturning evil. You are exposing evil people, evil plans, sins from way before. And Lord, it's always true that there needs to be a revelation of some kind for a sinner to come to you and let you come into their hearts and, like we read all through the Old Testament today, bring cleansing for us. Today, it's cleansing by your blood, Lord Jesus. Thank you for that. Oh, it's a bigger revelation for us every day, Lord, what you did on the cross for each one of us. Embrace him. We embrace you today, Lord Jesus. We embrace you. We hold you dear. Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. You are dear. You are our dearest friend. And we call on you, Lord. We call on you, Holy Ghost, for you have been declared the helper. The helper. You will help us, no matter what it is. Thank you. Thank you. We've come to lift you high. We've come to fulfill those war words that were spoken to us to continually cry, let the Lord be magnified. We are magnifying you, Lord, as we come to you in prayer. And Lord, I'm asking that you listen to all of the prayers and the requests and the prayers for healing of loved ones. Yes, yes, my dear sister Linda, the healing of your precious son, God's son, your husband, David. Ugh, to be named David. David Harper. Woo, what an awesome name. 
my precious brother, who slipped and slid all down the slopes of Masada with me. <laughs> oh my goodness, we were crazy, but we did it. We made it. We made it. And what a memory, wonderful memory. I pray for his healing today. Lord, I pray for every healing that is on the hearts of those who have come and those who have not even had prayer. They've not been prayed for. Lord, we do a blanket prayer asking you to bring healing, bring revelation, bring redemption, bring a great revival, a great drawing unto you that we will rise up against this evil that wants to snuff us out from a very small contingent of people. It's ridiculous. So let's rise up in our prayers and in our words and in our trust of you, and we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, all the people of the Lord cried a hearty amen and went about a beautiful day in him. I love you all so much. Bye-bye.